All right. So let's start with a little bit of a um, uh, pranayama to, to open our practice. So sit up in a comfortable seat. Make sure your sit bones are even on your prop, on your um, whatever that may be. And just rock. And when you rock, you're not rounding. You're sort of keeping your head at eye level and you're just leaning forward. You're gonna lengthen your spine. You're gonna lean back, go nice and slow. You don't wanna um, jam up your hips. Just lean back and then just lean forward. Just sort of explore, are you comfortable? Your hips to spine to neck relationship. And there should be some movement. It should be easy. You should actually feel the spine articulating. And if it's not, probably maybe sit a little higher. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, focus on the three chambers. So place your hand on your belly and focus on inhaling to expand the belly and exhale to contract it. So this is your palm could be right over your knee. We're just focusing on breathing in the belly. In and out through your nose, please. Expand the navel, expand the belly. Ooh, expand the navel, that sounds weird. Exhale, contract the belly. Next one, you're gonna take your hands to the uh, side ribs, side ribs. And uh, same thing, you're not focusing on here or here, but rather when you inhale, you're expanding the side ribs. And exhale, contracting them. This might be difficult, but you just practice it. Trying to only breathe in the side ribs. A couple more. Again, in and out through your nose. Last one. And then you'll go, uh, I like to put my thumb and index on my collarbones. So my hand is right near the top of the chest. And this is a similar practice. <clears throat> on the inhale, the hand lifts up. Feel your chest broadening. On the exhale, it's sinking back and down. A couple of those. Okay, we're gonna do this one more round, and this time you're going to keep track of how long the breaths are. So if you're gonna do hand on belly, you'll count seconds as you inhale. So it's one, two, three, whatever it is, and then exhale, one, two, three. So just keep track yourself, count to yourself, inhale, exhale. Try to figure out your count. So I don't want to give the cues because I want to, you to find out how well can you breathe in your belly. You can do the same thing with the side ribs. Count in your head. Doesn't have to be the same length as the belly breath. Now we'll go to our chest, same exact exercise, counting the inhale and counting the exhale.
once you've figured out which one is the longest count, place your hand there again and do two more breaths. So whichever zone had the longest count, you'll go there again and we'll do two more breaths. Then you'll go to the place that had the shortest breath and try to make it as long as the longest breath. So you're going to that zone that had the shortest and you're trying to lengthen the inhale and exhale. I'll do three breaths here. Okay, if you can't do it, you just do your best. Learning, allowing the body to stretch and open new breathing pathways. Good. Let's just take one final deep breath, breathing in all three chambers. Inhale. And a long exhale. Take a moment just to feel the effects of deep breathing, concentrating on breathing. Welcome to your practice. Let's begin our class standing. You'll bring maybe two blocks if you have them to the front of your mat. In addition to your two blocks, you'll go ahead and grab a strap. Start with the feet in mountain pose. So that's about hips distance apart or any other distance that feels appropriate. You keep the strap in your hand and you're just gonna rock for a moment, shifting the weight from the ball of the foot to the heel of the foot. Just be starting to become body centric, body awareness focused, concentrating, on the sensation at the feet. As you're rocking, you're gonna come over the center of the arch. If you take your strap any distance apart, maybe start out just wider than shoulders distance. Get some dust off my strap. And Knuckles, um, fingernails point down, squeeze the strap and start to pull the strap apart. And just hold this very steadily here. Try to feel how your shoulder and your neck relaxes just by pulling tension on the strap. Try to relax and make space in the shoulder and neck. Good. And as you do this, try to stretch, try to extend the strap away from your body without leaning forward. Breathe in your chest. Breathe in your belly. Concentrate on that full body breath. Okay, now we're going to lift that strap up nice and tall over our head. Keep pulling, I know your hands are probably tired. That's okay, that's part of the exercise. And you're trying to pull the strap apart. If you look up, you could see the thin line of the strap, but look straight ahead and pull the strap apart. And now keep pulling the strap apart and pull as far back as you can where the the shoulder joints feel very safe 
and you're getting a nice opening across the outer chest there. Good, let's release the strap down. You can let go of the strap for a moment. Spread your palms now. Widening your fingers. Almost think widening the bones of your hands. Let's breathe in our torso. Inhale, lift up your left arm. Keep extending. Keep reaching energy out through that arm. Like you're trying to get those fingertips as high as possible with your feet flat on the ground. Notice how your other shoulder, your left shoulder, your right shoulder has dropped down. Drop it down more. Try to reach down towards the floor and breathe. As you're reaching, stretching out, active hands. Try to relax those ribs. All right, let's come back to center. You can just pulse the hands a couple times. And we're going to do the opposite. You're going to brighten your right hand and reach it high into the sky. You want to see how high can you reach. How fully can you extend? And this will naturally, if you're really focusing on just how high can you reach, will bring the left shoulder down. You're going to actively reach the left shoulder down like you're trying to grab something off the ground with your left hand. Big, bright palms, big, spreading fingers, breathing through your torso. Keep it going. Keep your focus. And come on back to center. Let's go on ahead and grab the strap again. We can probably fold this one in half, I think. Just for, um, you know, safety, not safety, but convenience. And hold the end that's got the open, open ends in your left hand, and you're gonna bring that arm up in front of you and then over your head so the strap is dangling behind you. Okay, and then you're gonna reach back. So we're in the mirror here, so this is your left arm in the sky and your right arm behind your back. Good. And if you don't have a strap, you can use like a scarf or a towel, it'll work just fine, or a belt. Okay, now grab, you're going to walk your backhand up the strap and squeeze the strap very tightly. Now pull with your bottom hand, pull with your right hand, pull the left arm down, pull the left hand down to your, you know, maybe your upper, your shoulder blades. And then if, once you've done that, breathe here and get a nice stretch across the top. So here's the action. Switch sides so you can see. I'm holding very easily. I'm walking this hand up, and now I'm intentionally pulling down, squeezing the strap very tight, getting a deep stretch in that upper left arm. Okay, let's do our second side. So with the right hand, you Hold the strap high above your head. And then with the left hand, you reach and hold the bottom. And you're just gonna start to walk up. You don't wanna impinge your joint. I'm not struggling or straining for how high up the strap I go. Once I've got a steady grip, my shoulder feels safe. We pull down to open the stretch of the top arm. Breathe. And release. You guessed that the next one is the opposite direction. So let's take the right arm. What is it? 
The second side, I'm confused. Yes, the, it can be your left arm. Left arm's overhead. Right arm's behind you. And this time, this one you have to be very careful of. This time you're gonna lift the top arm up to create a stretch in your right shoulder. Be careful. This is dang this can be dangerous if you pull too tightly. We just want to find the stretch and then turn your head to the left. Breathing. Wonderful. Let's hold the top end of the strap with our right. Hold the bottom end of our strap with our left. And this time we pull upward with the top hand to stretch our left front shoulder. Breathing. Thinking about our posture, thinking about our spine in space. Good, and relax. Okay. Go ahead and find those blocks now. Um, Billy, you can just do your hand on your thighs. And you're gonna place your hand on the blocks or on a high up ledge, that coffee table ledge would be fine. Get yeah, rid of the countertop ledge. Um, hands on blocks. Make the hands about the same distance apart as the feet. So hips distance, shoulders distance, anywhere in there is fine. But place your hands flat. Try to make the hands as flat as can be and be able to push down, push down on those blocks, down on that surface that you're using. And then try to do the same thing with your feet. This is a little harder to think about, but push down through your feet, right through the center there. And just hold this pose a second. And as you push down, feel the elbows and knees, the hamstrings, and once you get those sort of left and right limbs feeling balanced and steady, even though you're pushing down, try to lift your whole spine up. Like you were, um, your spine was like a handle and you're being lifted towards the ceiling. But the hands and feet are reaching down. This is a great stretch and you're gonna breathe into the side ribs here. Releasing the hamstrings, releasing the shoulder blades. Wonderful. Bend your knees nice and deep. Inhale, reach up to the sky. And then exhale, step your right foot back. Three and a half, four feet, whatever feels good so that your feet are firmly planted. That back foot, you can turn it out a little bit. Plant it and bend your front knee over the front heel or maybe the front arch. Okay, you wanna keep that front foot just as planted. Okay, you're gonna lean forward, lean forward. So you maybe get a calf stretch in your back leg. You just breathe here a few breaths. Keeping those feet very secure, keeping that back leg nice and straight, not locked out. That knee joint should be engaged. And now you're going to reach your fingertips, reach your palms towards those blocks without rounding your spine. So you kind of keep your chest up, keep your gaze up. You're trying to find those blocks. You still got a little bit of resistance because your core is engaged. That's it. Lift up a little higher, John, just like that. You want to feel that core active. All right. One more deep breath here. And lift your arms up. Step back to mountain pose. Pull those hands up and back. And good, relax. Let's feel the body. Nice, rigorous asana. These long holds can be quite intense if we keep our mind active on the instructions. Okay. So step your left foot back. Again, finding that distance. Okay, if it's a little longer or shorter or wider. And we just want to make both feet firmly secure. Gonna bend that front knee over the heel or maybe just over the arch. And focusing on 
really pressing down and rooting. And now we're going to keep our chest and gaze outward as we try to reach for our props so that the back does not round, but rather is engaged. That's it, reaching out, extending with those hands like we've been working on. You got it. Feel that weight to wish you right in the center of your right thigh bone and the planting of that back leg. Breathe, hold the posture. Feel the body opening. And big step forward, lift the arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. You can squeeze your legs together. We're going to chair posture. So you're squeezing your inner thighs and bending deeply over the arch of the foot. Okay, you're going to touch the blocks. And if you've got a blanket, uh, and you'd like a blanket for your back knee, step your right foot back and let's lower the back knee down to the ground. So if you want a blanket for that knee, please go ahead and go ahead and point your back toe today. Now you're welcome to bend that front knee further, perhaps over the toe. Pushing down on your blocks, lift up through your throat, lift up through your chin. As you lift up through your chin, try to feel this crescent, this crashing wave-like sensation from your right knee all the way up to your chin, opening the front body. And breathe long breaths here. Okay, and one, tuck your back toes in one big step, step to the front of your mat, Inhale, back up to chair pose, bending both knees nice and deep. Thank you. Might get loud here. There's a fire truck coming up our road. I think they're going to get stuck. And now we're sitting a little deeper. So interesting to see if they made it up. All right, bend your knees and step your left leg back. Drop the back knee down, again, using that blanket if you need, and point the toe so that the blocks are near your front foot, whatever works. The further out in front, the more challenging it'll be. And bend your front knee, perhaps over the toe or more still over the arch. And we're gonna open our throat. Breathing. We're trying to feel the crescent like sensation from our left knee up the hip, up the side belly, up to our chin. Press down through that front foot. Keep it active. Okay, tuck your back toes and step back to the front of your mat. Return to the front of your mat. Ah, that's the word I should be using. Bend your knees and squeeze your legs back into chair pose. We'll try to pinch a piece of paper between your knees. And inhale, rise up. Long and tall body. Exhale, relax back down. Wonderful. Let's take two deep breaths here to see how the body has opened. Allow the air to flow freely through the system. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our strap again. And this time you'll take a nice wide stance on your mat with the outer feet parallel. And before we get, you just hold the strap and just rock. Just rock again from ball of the foot to heel of the foot. I feel how this is different from when the feet were much closer together. Notice if there's any 
lean, preferring one foot over the other as you shift the body weight. And then center. Squeeze the strap just like we did. I'm going to go a little longer this time as you reach the strap overhead, trying to pull the strap apart to open the shoulders. Breathe here, but keep your low belly muscles drawing in. Keep your low belly muscles drawing in. And then reach up through your chest. Reach up through both arms. Reach up through your knuckles. And now turn without trying not to move anything else but your waist. Just turn your waist to your left. Breathe. Try not to move any part of your legs or hips. Even your upper body doesn't move, right? It's just it's just moving because your waist turned. Keep pulling on the strap. I know it's uncomfortable in your hands. Keep squeezing that strap. Good, and come back to center. And then release the strap to the mat and you can put your fingertips on a coffee table, on blocks, or put your fingertips on the floor. And push down through your fingertips. Push down through your feet. Okay, we do a very similar pose with our legs much closer together. While you're pushing downward, try to lift your spine upward. Feel the breath. Feel the breath. And allow it to create a deeper sensitivity through the backs of the knees, through the elbow joints. Allow the focus on breathing to help your body become more sensitive. And really, it's just your awareness is becoming more, more aware of your body's sensitivity. All right, nice and centered on your feet. Try to lift back up. If you need to, you can just walk it out for a second and then re rejoin us. Otherwise, you're going to go right back to round side two. You're going to hold your strap. Pull it apart with a nice uh, strong fists and lift it overhead. Practicing. Draw your belly muscles back, keep them back, and reach up through your chest. Reach up through your knuckles. Breathe. And on the exhale, twist at your waist. Try not to move any other part of the body. Keep staying active. Even though these poses are slow, there's a lot of rigor in maintaining the strong hands, keeping the legs outstretched and engaged. And of course, keeping the mind on the present moment. Twisting back to center, let's drop on down, placing the hands on the floor, on blocks, or on a surface. In the same exact posture, you're going to push down on the floor with your hands and your feet. And as you push down, lift your spine up. And listen. Listen to the muscle and bone relationship in your joints, seeking balance and ease in your movement. Good, you can come up first or from here, heel toe your feet closer together until you're about a squat's distance apart. And then sit your butt back. Put your butt back into squat. You put your hands on or elbows on your knees. And we'll come to squat posture. Breathe here. And just take a couple deep breaths, trying to release your pelvis down towards the earth in between your heels. 
release your pelvis down towards the earth in between your heels. Now, don't interpret those instructions. You're in your house, you don't wanna make a mess. Release the musculature around the hips. Good, push down through your legs and let's rise back up. Come back to the front of your mat, turn your palms to face front, and let's outstretch our palms. Take a moment to just feel in your hips, your legs, how the asanas have affected your body. Keep your right palm active and outstretched and take your left palm over the top of the head and let's pull the skull to the left. Keep that right arm outstretched so you get a nice long extension from your right ear to your right shoulder to your right thumb. And alternate, active left hand as you pull to the right. And we're trying to feel the connection from the left ear to the left shoulder to the left thumb. And come back up. Good. Let's come down to kneeling postures. So you can put both knees on the blanket if you like. And you're going to take the blocks to the low setting and place your palms on the blocks. And the blocks aren't necessary here, but I like blocks. Let's use them. Push your hands down. Point your toes and push your shins down. Push your shins down is a strange instruction. Just try it. Push your shins down and feel how it takes the sort of the skin, um, the outer, you can feel the skin of the sit bones kind of move down. You can feel the hamstrings energy move down by pushing the shins down. And draw, as you do this, draw your belly muscles up meaning into your body. Okay, just push down, stay active. Keep that active energy, and now reach your left hand straight out like you're gonna shake someone's hand. Keep pushing down with your shins, keep pushing down with your right hand, and breathe. Keep drawing your belly muscles up and in. And let's change hands, keep breathing, stay connected to the pose, one continuous pose, we're just changing arms. Okay, we're gonna go back to the first uh, hand again, that's your left hand. And this time you're gonna lift your right toe up into the sky as high as you can, as high as you can lift it. And you're still trying to draw your belly muscles up, even though it feels like your belly muscles are getting a little stretch. And then come back down. Switch arms, put that right hand straight out. And lift the left toe straight up. Now remember that left hand and the right shin are pushing down to help engage the belly muscles. and come back to center. Oh, here's where it gets nice and fun. You're gonna take your strap in the middle of the strap, you're going to loop on the ankle on the foot area. I feel like you can get over the top of the foot. And then you're gonna lift the foot up with the opposite hand. 
Now, if you feel like your strap isn't long enough, what you can do is you can actually make, go ahead and make a loop. Okay, so you're gonna make a loop. This is optional, however you wanna do it, to feel like you got the, uh, you can securely hold the foot. This just makes the strap a little longer. Okay, so let's all do strap on the right foot. Okay, bring it around your left side. We'll come back to our starting pose, tabletop. And this time we'll lift, well, you all a second to get your strap first, okay? You're gonna lift your right foot first. That's the foot with the strap on it. Pushing down, nice and stable base. And now you're gonna take that strap and you just reach out and you're gonna walk your hand back along the strap so my elbow's pointing in front. <laughs> you guys can do this, I believe. There we go. You got it, John? Yes, Billy, you're in best, you gotta invest. There you go, reach, breathe. Keep trying to extend that top arm. Yeah, now you're getting into it. Feel the belly get long, open those ribs. Beautiful. You got it, Jim, look forward. That's it. <laughs> no, look up, Jim. <laughs> I'm, I'm trusting that he's laughing there, not crying. <laughs> Good, and release. All right, let's try to, we gotta do the second side. I know, <laughs> I know it wasn't anyone's favorite, but here we go, second side. We're gonna take the strap over to the other foot. Get the strap first, bring it around. And we lift the foot first, and we walk the hand down the strap, and you reach and extend the arm. Good, chest up, chin up, Billy. That's it, good, look at being familiar. I think, John, you gotta switch your arm. Isn't that the same side? Oh, because of the end in, of shoulder, I gotcha. Breathing out, kick and pull. You can do it. Use your balance, use your focus. Two more deep breaths, you can do it. And relax down, wonderful. Go have yourself a sip of water for, you know, that was like level 10 on complexities. So, proud of you. <laughs> It's like a cross-legged seat when we return. All right, so taking a comfortable seat, you're gonna open your loop so that your thumbs are holding the loop. The thumbs are holding the loop and pulling the loop apart. So my fingers are sort of spreading outside the loop. Come closer to show the key. Thumbs are in the loop. So that when I'm pulling, I can spread my hands and hook on the thumbs. Yeah. Yeah, good. Perfecto. You can make that loop wide enough that your shoulders can feel open. And sit cross leg with the shins parallel. And so you open your hands, pull with the thumbs, that tail of the strap out of your way, and open your chest here. Good. If you need to, the bigger you make the loop, the easier this is on your shoulders. 
And now you're gonna lean forward, keep your chest open, keep your chin up, and just a little bit, lean forward. Now just a little bit, lean back. One more time, lean forward. Lean back, keep pulling with the, the strap with your thumbs, change the cross of your legs, see if you can balance, keep the arms up and lean forward again. Lean back, keep breathing, making space in that rib cage. Lean forward. Lean back. Last time you're gonna take your legs straight out so the legs are straight and extended. Heels are on the mat and you're gonna lean forward. Now you can let your head kind of get heavy. Keep leaning forward, sending your fingertips forward, reaching those thumbs apart, breathing, moving softly, listening to your spine, not creating tension or torque and keep going until you can just, you feel like you found your edge and then drop the arms and hang a moment. Good, relax the body. Walk your hands over to your right foot. Just breathe there. Walk your hands over to your left foot and breathe there. And come on back up to center. Let's bring our legs in together. You're going to Take that strap, that loop, and you're going to place it on the ball of your left foot. So both legs are outstretched in front, sitting at a prop if you'd like. And you're going to sit up with your spine, so you're vertical. Extend your arms out and hold the strap. And the first thing, before you lift your leg, you, you just you know, maybe bring your legs a little closer together if you can. Pull the strap so it's like you're, you can almost feel the leg bone is kind of rooting. It's rooting in your hip joint. See if you can feel that, like you're drinking your leg bone into your hip socket. And once you've done that, pull the strap so your leg comes up in the air and walk your hands down the strap. You can sit back a little bit. Keep rooting the leg into the hip joint. Active, active, even though you're sitting on the cushion here on the mat, active pose. Okay, let the strap out, lower the foot down. Let's go to our second side. Step one is to pull the strap, to pull the leg bone into the hip joint. Very important step. Once you feel it rooted in the hip joint, you lift with the strap, walking the hands in any amount. Breathing. More deep breaths. And then slowly let the strap back out. Good. Okay, cross your ankles. Let's come back forward and let's practice downward facing dog. First one of the day. In your first one of the class. Maybe you've already, I know you've all done downward dog right there. And this downward dog, try to feel. Remember how when we pulled on that strap, how it drew the leg bone into the hip? Try to lift your toes almost to feel the leg bones drawing into the hips. That same integrating sensation. And spread your hands and push out through the floor. That same extending feeling when we have the strap between our thumbs.
Good. We'll come to the front. Go over bend. Inhale up to standing. Okay. Nice wide stance again. And this time you'll turn your left foot out 90 degrees. Focus on making both feet centered from heel to ball of foot. Pull your right hip back so it kind of tilts you forward and just pause here. And now focus on pushing through your feet. Pushing through your feet. We're going to go into our triangle pose, but we're taking our time today. Pushing through the stable knee joints. And now you're going to take your left hand, you're going to place it on your shin and slide it down your shin, any amount. Now look, check in with your shoulders. Try to make your shoulders in a perfect line over your shin towards the sky, like there was a flagpole moving through your shin, your shoulder, and your other shoulder. Good. Now extend your top arm up, that same hand we've been working that's spreading those fingers, spreading the palm. Breathe in triangle. Work the breath. Try to empty your body completely of air on the exhale. Good. Then inhale, come all the way up. And let's change our sides. We have the right foot turned out and the left foot back. 90 degrees or slightly turned in. Just make sure both feet are really anchored and stable. Then pull your left hip back. Try to feel like the hips are still integrating. You can reach down through both feet. We'll place our right hand on our shin somewhere. Now examine the shin, shoulder to shoulder alignment. If you're having trouble getting that top shoulder above the other shoulder. Come up higher. Bring your hand up higher. And then extend your top arm. In today's trikonasana, we're focusing on of when we exhale, that all the air empties using your abdomen. Inhale, come up, and let's step out of our pose. Good. Okay. I'm going to go back to either a, a tiny loop or having your strap uh, extended, and we'll, we'll um, use the half of the strap. And what you'll do is step. If you got the strap long like this, you're just going to put your foot on the um, on the on the strap on the ball of the foot, and you'll hold it with one hand. And if you're doing the loop, it's you just loop the foot. And so we're going to do your left leg first, left foot down, left hand on the strap. So if you're at the wall for balance, you're going to put your right hand on a side wall like this. Okay, or a coffee table, whatever you need to just manage balance. 
and uh, yeah, bend your knees a little bit to start, and then now focus on keeping your right leg nice and firm, and then pull with the strap. Now you might have to come walk your hand down the strap at different stages, but we want to work on keeping the spine very vertical, very upright, and you're pushing out through that leg. You're pushing straight out with the leg. Yeah, Billy, now walk your hand down the strap just a little bit. Um, so if you need to even like brace yourself with your hip against the wall, that'll work too. But it's that feeling of pushing out, pulling the leg bone in, and then the spine, the whole spine from the low spine to the back of my skull is all moving into the back plane as I'm extending out. If I want, I can hold with both hands if you can balance, and this can help you work the strap. Beautiful, great work. And release it down, wonderful. Okay, so we're combining all of our components from all the poses today. Let's go to the other foot. I can't stress enough, it's that feeling of the leg pushing out, but also this rooting the leg bone into the hip joint. Okay, so using a wall for balance when you need, or you can just you can have like your hip against the wall maybe. Um, or of course, just working on the balancing aspect, free off the wall. Left foot is down this time. Left feet will bend the knees and then straighten them. And we're gonna lift the leg, keeping the leg extended the whole time. You can walk your hand down the strap. And we're pushing out. This is that active presence in our asana. Pushing out with the foot. Pulling with the arm, even though it's outstretched. Breathing. And release down. Wonderful. Let's do one more. You put the strap on the first foot again. And this time, you're going to take the leg straight out. So you start with the feet parallel, and as soon as you start to pull with the strap, that toe turns out. So the toe points to the sky. You're trying to go a straight 90 degrees, straight perpendicular from where you were. You can, it's okay if your leg is low. It's okay if your leg is low and you're just having a really long extended leg. You don't want to compromise the core of the posture. That engaged spine, abdomen is toned. Breathe. Deep breaths. And swinging that leg back down. Wonderful work. Let's go to our second side. Bring that strap on the right foot. Again, today, that's why we're not holding the knee or holding the foot with our hand. We're using the strap so that we can keep our spine long, belly engaged, and honor the core components of the posture by using the strap as an aid. Okay, so nice and slow, you'll turn that toe out as you swing it up. And you're welcome to slide the hand down the strap if you'd like. Oop, that was too far for me. Breathing. Push out with the leg. more deep breaths. And back down, giving slack to the strap. All right, place the strap off to the side. 
and come back down to kneeling posture and then tabletop. In kneeling posture, you're going to come to cobra pose. Bring or from tabletop, you're going to come to cobra pose, dropping the hips into the mat. Push down with your hands and open your throat. And today, try to broaden the tops of your shoulders. Try to roll them away from each other. Keeping the belly muscles drawn in. Slowly bend your elbows and lower down. Inhale, curl back up with bent or straight elbows, whatever works for you. Belly muscles in, pelvis relaxed. And slowly rolling down. Take your left arm across your body and bend your right knee. If you can hold the left, I'm sorry, the right foot with the right hand, great. If not, again, find that strap and we'll use the strap again. Try to lift your chest up. Just use the weight of your hand on your foot to help open the thigh, open the hip. Breathe long, slow breaths. And then reach from your right hip out through your right knee, just ever so gently. Reach from the front of your right hip out through the top of the right knee. Okay, release that side. I'll place the other arm in front and just rotate to the second side. Resting the foot on top of the, I'm sorry, resting the hand on top of the foot. And just let the weight of the arm do the work today. We focus on something more internal than just pulling with your arm. Rather than just pulling with your arm, reach the front of your left hip out through the left knee. As you open your chest and gaze, to the front of the room. That's it, beautiful. Jim, can you bring that right, left arm? Can you bring the left arm in front of your body a little more so you're kind of up on your elbow? Yeah, like bend it even, bend the elbow and kind of like perch yourself up. Yeah, like that, yeah, exactly. Gives you a little bit more stability. All right, let's release that leg. Place the hand and we'll push back tabletop and we'll go to our pigeon posture. You're going to take your left knee forward and the left foot across as you walk the right leg back. Pointing the left, sorry, pointing the right toe. Push down with that shin. You can start up in the upright cobra-like version or just go right down to the mat and rest. But let's either way, try to let the pelvis and the sit bones sink towards the mat, sink towards the earth. Pelvis and the sit bones. What's going on over there, John? I'd mean, rather do some like house repairs instead of uh, yoga poses. <laughs> we'll all come down to the forearms now. And then you give a little bit of active uh, attention to our pigeon. You're going to turn your palms down and walk your hands out so much that your arms are actually in the air and only your hands are on the mat. Good. Just see if you can breathe here and still relax, even though the arms are active. You can start to explore the breath 
in the back body here, which we really haven't focused on today. But this pose does bring that out of us. Back body breathing. All right, walk it back in. However you want to transition, maybe through down dog or just back to tabletop, even a pigeon pose. No, even a cobra pose. And then you'll bring the right knee forward and the right foot across. Reach back through the left toe and push down through the left shin. Cobra pose variation first. And then coming to the elbows when you're ready. Just to breathe long and slow, not driving with the breath any longer, but rather just turning the mind to the breath so that the body relaxes, the body sinks into the pose. Feel the pelvis descend and the sit bones descend. Then you just extend the palms out so the arms are straight. Walk it back up. Let's swing our back leg around to the front. We'll lie slowly down on our backs. Good. Stretch your legs straight up into the sky. And then try to reach your fingers up to touch those toes. A little bit of core work. It's okay. I know it's almost the class I'm almost over while I'm doing this to you. It's okay. Good. And then bring your arms down, rest your head down, cactus arms. And you're going to take both legs. You can either have the legs straight or knees bent, both legs nice and slow over to the right for a twist. And then come back up, nice and slow, a little bit of core work, it's okay, I promise. I'm gonna take both legs over to the left. Both legs back up to the sky. And we can do our shoulder pose, uh, plow pose, lifting, sending those toes back behind us. It's like an upside down forward bend. We're going further into plow. Or even a full shoulder stand if you'd like.
slowly coming out of your inversion. Rest the bottoms of the feet together and allow the knees to fall open. Resting on your back. Close your eyes, turn your palms to face the sky. John, you're welcome to lay back at this point if you want. One final sort of posture here. You're going to bring those knees back up and just pull your left shin towards your body. Cradling the shin towards your forehead and chest. And then switch that leg. Back inside. Bring the shin to the chest so the shin is parallel with your shoulders if possible. And then placing the feet on the floor, extend your legs out straight. Take a moment just to get the body as long as possible. So bring those hands overhead. Look straight up, straight up at the ceiling, right, right where you're at the spot on the ceiling that was directly above your eyeballs. And then place the hands behind you overhead and slide your heels, slide your feet like you were trying to push a wall over and slide your arms, slide your fingertips away from your body. And let's keep our spine where it is. Try not to let that low back arch up. Just lengthen yourself. Keep stretching, keep lengthening. And then release all the effort. And slowly turn that releasing of effort into a pose for deep rest. Giving your body, your limbs and arms as much space as they need.
Stretch your body. Take a comfortable seat on your mat. Thanks for practicing. Hope you feel better. Namaste.